I'll show this one really quick. I got this snippet here. Uh, let's let's uncomment this. I was looking around for like what are some you know bookmarklets and little quick accessibility things we could add. So this is a link. It's come back to us, but this is a link to a web page that this person made, Joe, mm -hmm. and has this tiny little JavaScript thing to turn off mouse events so you can experience a website without being able to use your mouse. All right. And in <laughs> Cypress, in this tool, right, I've been able to say, okay, let's make a little checkbox, and we're going to say, I want to go to keyboard only mode. And this means that, like, right now, if I want to type in here, I can click around, I can submit the form. Mm -hmm. If I switch to keyboard only, none of that works anymore. So I, can't, right. I can't fool myself into, into believing that, like, the keyboard behavior is there. I can't accidentally get something. I have to use the tab key. Then I can type. And then I can type. And I can go down to log in and hit enter. And it tries to do the form. But I have no keyboard, I have no mouse activity that I can do. Oh, so it's like a utility for you to try out the accessibility of your page. Exactly. And, it's, yeah. All it's right. just like, here, here's a quick thing we can do to say like, you know what? I, I, I want to make sure it's working. Um, I want to demonstrate, especially. So if I've done work on the front end and I want to show it off, I sometimes, like, I want to point out the work that we do around accessibility to make things functional. Because in, in companies I've been at, that's not always a priority and people don't know that mm -hmm. like front end involves a lot of this type of thinking. So to be able to do something like I'm going to switch to keyboard only mode and get around and be like, yeah, okay, cool. And here I might say this focus style is not very good, right? I can barely tell that I'm focused in these fields. I can tell because of the highlight on the text mm -hmm. and I can sort of barely tell that there's an outline on the button. So my experience of this would be the focus style in this component is actually pretty weak. Yeah. And you you could just test it, right? We could come down, we can turn this off. You can do exactly the same thing without that little button. So it's it's more to illustrate the, the concept of tooling like this. So just to just to maybe emphasize, everything you added here is basically just hacking on the component ts file and then the adding bunch of stuff to the to the view right or yeah, rather the, into the html file last actually. couple of things have been in this component index.html yeah. Yeah, yeah so everything is user code like i work at cypress but this is not a development build of cypress if we open mm -hmm. it up right this is 12.5.1 this is the one that was released last week and so we're not using any changes to Cypress to enable stuff like this. We're yeah. just kind of fooling around. You're just and adding your own layer to yeah, to your so, testing, to improve your testing. And that's what you can do because you are in the browser and you can just add whatever. Yeah, it gives you like a little bit of manual testing and it's just yeah. like a category of tool. So the reason yeah. that like... Like you pointed out, this could be useful because if you want to test keyboard behavior, what we're tempted to do, we're tempted mm -hmm. to click into the first field and then type. And yeah, then yeah. Type. And it works, so we're happy. But what if this field was not like keyboard focus bullet? What if it was hidden with a bad tab index so that you couldn't get there with the tab key? Like yeah. there's little usability things that can creep in where, um, yeah, maybe it's good to sometimes do this. Maybe to do this in an end-to-end -end test as well, which you'd have to approach differently because you don't have control over the whole DOM there. In component tests, we're mounting just a specific part of the page, not yeah. visiting a URL. Um, OK, so last thing I will show you is kind of extended off of that. So let's get rid of these for a second. And we'll get rid of our JavaScript that was doing things. And I want to pull in like a, a heavier accessibility tool. All right. So in our component TS, same support file thing, there's this Khan Academy totally package. And this is, again, just like a category of tool that we could have, where all of a sudden, we imported that in our component TS, Cypress refreshed, ran the JavaScript from the imported file, and that JavaScript injected this helper tool. Oh, nice. And, and how, how did it know where to import that? Or it just takes the body element, or...? So it like this package itself has its own 
set of decisions and it's mm -hmm. a general purpose like you can you can run this against other websites right this mm -hmm. is not oh okay okay not okay. like even designed as a cypress plugin or anything it just yeah. so happens we have a web page where this would work and so now we have the ability to use the screen reader wand mm -hmm. and let's let's move this around a little bit because i've made this test tiny <laughs> i've given myself some trouble here but a good way to think about this is like, okay, a screen reader user is going to listen to the page being described. Yeah. The page will be described based on the accessibility tree the browser generates. The browser exposes right. the page accessibility tree based on the HTML that our components contain. So if we want to understand what a screen reader user will hear and whether it makes sense, we can visually inspect the accessibility tree in Chrome which I might show you in a second, just to kind of round mm -hmm. out this idea. But you can also use something like this, the screen reader wand to say, here's the real label for these fields. And a way that we could break this, if we come in and yeah, username is the name of the field. So let me find that label in here, login form dot view. Where is the text username in login form? Maybe try to, oh. Input field, oh, it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. So the label is kind of managed like this. So I'm gonna look at input field, how it's implemented, right? It uses a real label element. Mm -hmm. So because it uses a real label element that wraps an input, this is correctly associated as the label to this input. So a screen reader user can listen to this page without being able to see any of it and understand they can start typing into this. If yeah. I were to just to make this a div, a tool like the the wand here should be able to tell me, great, no mm -hmm. text visible to a screen reader, no text visible to a screen reader. On these form fields that, that previously like had something like, oh, cool. Like login. So if we make it a real, or yeah, like the button, if we make it a real label again, we'll have to do this rigmarole of like, Okay, cool. I have to turn this back on again, move stuff out of the way. But now I'm hovering the field itself. It yeah. explains what, what the label is and what the content is. And so it's able to associate here is the, a field that has a proper label. And like that's really important for many reasons. Mm -hmm. But being able to, like if you imagine a bigger component, to quickly do this um, is really important. And if we look at something like the login button, if that was, instead of being a login button, it was just an SVG icon, you would still want to expose a, an accessible name for a screen reader. And you would want to have that as a test, right? You would want to use that as part of your, your get by label text or something. Mm -hmm. But you also like could have tooling like this that you could inject to really check anything that you care about or like make your development life easier.